Hello, uh, good afternoon to everyone present here. Thanks a lot for joining in today. We have with us today George Dobre. He's a very successful cybersecurity professional and he's a big part, of, he's a big trainer with EC Council who has numerous years of experience and is definitely one of the top people in his field. Over to you, George. Uh, hello everybody, good morning or good afternoon because uh, for some of our colleagues that in Europe, joining us from Europe, it's uh, still morning, but it's afternoon for most of you. For me, it's just the middle of the day because I'm, uh, I'm attending this webinar from, uh, yeah, from my, my uh, home office, which is uh, in Bucharest. So I'm very happy to to welcome so large number of the the attendees, and uh, we have a plan today. Uh, for today, uh, we're going to I'm going to to share the plan today to provide you some uh, guidance how to build uh, a career in cybersecurity. I think uh, the reason. Most of you joining this session is that one to learn more about this this uh, opportunity, and uh, yeah, I'll provide you some yeah some ideas about uh, this job related to penetration testing, related to what kind of expectations you should have, what kind of activity, and you'll have the opportunity to 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 evaluate yourself if this kind of job it's uh, it's uh, for you. And uh, yeah, I'll be happy to if you are decided to to join the um, the community, the large community of cybersecurity professionals. Um, well, I do. I'll have some questions for for you, and of course, we are uh, saving some time for Q and A session at the end of our uh, conversation. So again, uh, welcome uh, everyone joining uh, our session uh, session today. Um, a few words about myself, not actually extending this conversation because, uh, yeah, our, uh, our host today uh, got the presentation, so I presented uh, some details about my, my activity already. Um, I was, uh, because I know most of you are students, um, I was spending my, myself 15 years as a faculty staff before starting my consulting business in, uh, in uh, IT. I was focusing any time mostly on uh, cyber, uh, cyber security and uh, I'm providing uh, consultancy and training services for uh, large organizations like US Army, Department of Defense in UK. I'm uh, I'm actually delivering uh, train the trainer sessions, uh, yeah, to to help some other guys to to become uh, uh, trainers in uh, cyber uh, cyber security, and uh, I can share um, as well some activities that um, yeah are. I do consider very relevant here yeah, for preparation of the careers. For example, just before uh, coronavirus outbreak, um, I was visiting Northumbria University in uh, in UK, and uh, we had a meeting there with um, an association of uh, of uh, educators, professors, um, different representing different uh, colleges and universities in in UK how to set up the activity of uh, cyber security preparation and how to include in the curricula of the university, uh, different universities such uh, cyber security preparation programs. It was a very successful two days, uh, two days meeting. Yeah, maybe I'll share something more about this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of activity we had there. So I'll start um, my presentation. Um, yeah, actually, Saying a big thank you to all people involved in, in IT services and cybersecurity is just part of this, uh, this domain, large domain of activity. Uh, we are talking uh, a lot about the contribution of the uh, doctors, nurses in keeping uh, people healthy during, uh, during the coronavirus outbreak. Um, and yeah, we have to, 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 uh, to tell uh, thank you for all people involved in this kind of activity, but including as well the IT guys, because uh, 
the IT guys are bringing a, a relevant contribution in making people to connect each other, to connect to their businesses those, uh, during those uh, very, difficult, uh, very difficult times. Um, if we're talking about uh, the landscape of, um, uh, of um, coronavirus outbreak, so we do understand there are some relevant attacks because we're talking about cybersecurity today, right? And uh, there are some relevant attacks. Maybe you'll tell, tell, um, I'll tell you a bit more about those particular attacks. I have um, uh, here actually the representation uh, generated by Interpol. So presenting actually some, some common attacks uh, we are seeing more frequently those days because again the, the the attackers are taking advantage anytime of some opportunities and the outbreak uh, representing uh, yeah seeing so many people uh, connected and working from home it's um, really opportunities representing a really opportunity for the attacker to try to to steal information to steal data to compromise our assets and uh, and uh, so on and we're seeing different uh, uh, some specific attacks like uh, people enabling uh, the attackers enabling malicious domains uh, online scams and phishing attacks uh, data harvesting malware and uh, yeah, vulnerabilities related uh, to this environment, working uh, working from uh, from home, and uh, we have a checklist uh, provided by Interpol as well, how to provide a decent security, how to avoid uh, attack, how to expose, how to how to avoid data exposure, data leakage, and uh, compromising uh, compromising our valuable assets. Um, but um, the reaction of um, different organizations to the coronavirus outbreak environment, it, it's very, very different. We have to, to discuss, we have to consider as well, um, a different type of cultures of organizations which are actually uh, considering to implement um, information security countermeasures in order to better protect their assets. Um, my question is, if you're considering to, to, to work in, uh, in cybersecurity and information security field, uh, actually, which company you would like to work for? Yeah, there are four different types of attacks. Yeah, conservative companies, uh, well, uh, some uh, companies, uh, some companies considering uh, um considering uh, some considering it some somewhat strategic but not too much yeah and so for some other companies the it services are the are definitely a strategic component of the business strategy of the organization and definitely we'd like to to work uh for those companies which are considering uh, technology as a competitive advantage and uh, differentiator Actually, they are considering a business enabler, the IT, IT, IT services, technology and uh, security being business services, business uh, enabler. Yeah. And uh, the IT services are considered highly strategic for those organizations. And definitely you would like to work for a such organization. So if you're planning to, uh, to apply for a job, uh, in IT services and especially cybersecurity, you should first do such kind of investigation. Maybe you are familiar with the CMMI model, the maturity model of the organization, and uh, yeah, you have to consider the, this definitely this behavior. You have to do some background check uh, related to the uh, to the, the business profile of your future employer. Um, let's discuss a bit about uh, about um, the job market trends related to cybersecurity. I collected here some information from uh, from various sources, and um, okay, some sources are saying, well, in in by by the next year, so the number of the jobs unfilled in cybersecurity will be about about uh, three that five million unfilled job wow that sounds an opportunity a great opportunity uh the cybersecurity unemployment rate it's zero percent it was actually zero percent last year yeah and uh well it's it, it's it, it's a specific number yeah 
because um, uh, even coronavirus outbreak, it was affecting the job market uh, for, uh, for uh, different areas of human activity, different type of jobs. But definitely, it's an, it's a, we are seeing an increasing number of job requests in cybersecurity uh, those days. And so cybersecurity engineers, for example, okay, I have to admit this is a top level job. It's not uh, for beginners. Yeah, you have to, to be very well prepared yeah, in order to pursue for a such, to apply for a such job. But um, uh, look, the, the, the job is uh, highly paid and um, yeah, it's on top of recruitment agencies. Uh, they're searching for, for specialists to, to fill a such job. And if you're talking about India, because I do realize, yeah, most of you are for, for, uh, from this country. Yeah, uh, this year it's about, we're talking about 1 million of cybersecurity professional to meet the, 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 the demand. Yeah, those are the, the real numbers we're talking, uh, we're talking about in the cybersecurity. So if you are considering to apply for a such uh, job to, to specialize in a such domain, uh, definitely in a such field definitely it's a future uh, it, it's it's a future for for uh, your job honestly but uh, how to apply for a such uh, for a such job and uh, how to how to consider the opportunities how long it will be the preparation for uh, your job in cybersecurity yes i have a job here in this uh, this uh, picture but uh, honestly it's, it's you see it's not actually just a job because uh, you have to consider if you want to become a, a, a highly, highly, highly paid security consultant, that I think it's the intention of anyone in the audience, uh, actually they ha you have two paths. Yeah? The normal one that could take um, yeah, uh, maybe 20 years to achieve that, that uh, particular level of experience required, uh, or the second path, which is a very fast one. <laughs> well, it's about uh, just two years, let's say. Um, you become, you are becoming a hacker, uh, criminal, convicted, uh, avoiding jail time, and uh, after that you will be hired. Uh, it's not uh, actually a job because if you're familiar with Mirai Botnet attack, yeah, you know the three guys behind uh, very young guys. They were generating the, uh, such kind of attack. They are behind the such crime network, Mirai Botnet. They were generating so much business damage to so many companies. Um, well, after being catched by, by the police, they are avoiding jail time. Um, they have to pay a fine, which is not so high compared to the damage uh, that actually they generated uh, against so many business for so many businesses. Uh, and they have to, they're avoiding jail time because uh, the judge decided for them just to, uh, just to do some community working hours, uh, 2,500 uh, community hours uh, each of them. But you know how they're doing this? They're helping FBI to catch the bad guys. So for them, this path, it was, it was uh, something they, they were applying for. It was very successful and they probably they are, they are going to, to become um, yeah, very, uh, very famous security consultant. And you know the story of Kevin Mitnick as well, the most famous uh, social engineer over time. After spending some years in jail, he became uh, the, the most famous social engineering consultant in the, in the world. Um, okay, so um, uh, probably, probably the normal uh, cybersecurity career that it's uh, looking a bit different, yeah. Uh, there are some steps to, to fulfill, so you are filling first an, an entry-level job, a cybersecurity specialist technician, and so the mid-level job, pen testing, and after that advanced, uh, advanced level uh, cybersecurity engineer. It will take some time, yeah, to, to, to be involved and to pursue, to, to uh, reach, uh, to reach the final goal, to, to become a, a famous guy, famous consultant, a cybersecurity architect, and, and uh, uh, this kind of, to, to, to fill a such kind of job. Uh, but I have here another report presenting the, um, the coolest jobs in cybersecurity. Maybe you will select a job in this field, right? Um, Starting with uh, starting with the, the, the first level, 
digital forensic analyst, investigator, pen tester for systems and uh, networks, application pen tester, security operations center analyst, cyber defender. And after, after spending some years specializing in this particular job, um, yeah, you're going to uh, to you yeah, are going to apply for a more advanced job, more specialized job like uh, hunter, threat hunter, for example, or security architect, or um, uh, security software developer manager. It's a huge demand of of uh, those guys. Yeah, malware analyst, reverse engineering. The guys doing reverse engineering for for malware, yeah, for example, or uh, being involved in a in a management position as a technical director or chief information security officer in a in an organization. So those are the top uh, top jobs. Uh, busy uh, looking at the the, the specialization uh, requests. Yeah, you can see in the job market for uh, cybersecurity. Um, but how to how to get here? Yeah, it's uh, actually very important to 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 consider some steps. Yeah, to to do in order to reach a such position of a of a well-renowned renowned cybersecurity expert. How to start this? Well, um, I would I would uh, say. You have to start. You have to start finding a, a good mentor and uh, and uh, making a, a plan. It's it's good to it's good to to find a good mentor, right? Um, the mentor should invest time in you and disciple you. The mentor will invest time in you, transferring his knowledge, experience, and skills, providing you some guidance uh, related uh, related to this. It should be a respected professional with years and experience in the industry, expert in his domain, approachable and outgoing person, um, lifelong learner, committed to learn new things, able to motivate you and providing uh, constructive feedback to, to you, track record of successful mentoring. So you have plenty of expectations for from a, from a mentor. It's very important to have someone experienced to, to guide your steps. Uh, second, you have to you have to select your area of specialization, yeah. Because um, yeah, we're not talking about script kiddies. Yeah, don't be just a script kiddie in cybersecurity. You are, you, you are not a, a real specialist on on this. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of jobs are automated nowadays. And uh, if you are looking for jobs that may be subject of automation, automation, so maybe you are not picking the right, uh, right, uh, uh, right job. Yeah. For example, uh, first line of incident response may be automated. Yeah. Machine learning algorithms could take guided decisions. Uh, well, probably there is no feature for such job. However. Uh, we can remove the human factor in malware reverse engineering and digital forensics, for example, uh, because there is no opportunity to, to replace, at least for instance, uh, by AI and machine learning, the activity of humans, experience of humans. Uh, well, AI and machine learning could help your job, but could not replace you. Yeah. For example, another example, if you want to, if you want to, if you're, uh, if you're going to apply for a job, to prepare for a job like um, purple team, uh, pen testing. So, well, uh, probably the automated tools will, um, the tools can, can automate the vulnerability scanning, for example. But um, individuals with both offensive and defensive skills are, uh, are actually not so, uh, yeah, we, we cannot find uh, so easy so the very specialized jobs being members of uh, purple purple team yeah um yeah this is this is actually the this is actually the, you have to select your specialization so the top specialization reverse engineer digital forensic incident response red or purple team threat analytics threat hunting pen tester specialized guys security developer um Another um, another step, yeah, to still to for uh, for your to advance, yeah, in this uh, objective, to this objective to prepare for the uh, being a cybersecurity specialist. 
um, you should practice a lot you know, and for this reason you should set up a home lab to to experiment in a virtual environment yeah use uh, free or online resources because you cannot afford to to pay expensive tools and uh, uh, platform access for expensive platform but uh, even free tools open source uh, open source intelligence tools for example are providing you a lot of capabilities to uh, to learn a lot about uh, cyber security you have to read you have to read a lot this is very very important yeah to um, uh, to uh, read uh, to read books to read uh, uh, news blogs uh, to study the information about the latest uh, tools techniques and procedures used by the by the attackers it's very important uh, this yeah um, next step get industry recognized certification certification so you have to pick very very carefully uh, the certification career and we'll have to yeah we're discussing a bit more about this uh, during our uh, session uh, session today what kind of certification I should uh, I should I should select yeah and to prepare for this and passing the passing the exam for this uh, you should be proficient in learning to to code a bit yeah uh, not being necess not necessary for any kind of job in cybersecurity to be uh, to be a professional developer but you should be familiar at least with um, with the basics and uh, as well to master um, scripting language that could be very useful yeah um, which one python even powershell ruby and so and if you're considering um, uh, programming languages to be proficient in c c++ java and so to have just basic uh, basic uh, basic understanding of the, the uh, programming languages. It's absolutely necessary to, to master at least uh, at least a, a scripting language. Uh, learn to code. Yeah, again, try to try to. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's that uh, that job. I'm insisting about this. And um, okay, another advice: give back to the community. Just not do, to be not just a consumer for the information related to cybersecurity tools techniques and procedures and and so on but uh, you should give back so get involved into open source projects to contribute code donate uh, time and money share your skills and knowledge with others uh, help and mentor new starters go to attend security conferences speak on security conferences okay we have to admit we have everything online nowadays but it's it's accessible and uh, you are definitely invited to do this Skills required, it's just about the, the skills, technical skills and soft skills. We did review some, some requirements in the, previous, uh, in the previous slide. You need to, to be in possession of technical skills, fundamental knowledge of IT system, information security, network administration, operation system, and so web application and coding scripting skills. But it's very important as well uh, to manage some soft skills, analytical skills. Yeah, you should be in a position of knowledge related to the techniques uh, for this. Uh, you need some writing uh, writing ability. Yeah, because you have to prepare some reports, some articles, and so it's very important to this. Uh, communication skills are very important. Most of the jobs in cybersecurity are uh, team jobs, so not just an individual job. Yeah. So communication skills are very important. No one can do a big project uh, by himself. Yeah, he should be involved in, in a team. Yeah, with different uh, different uh, expertise, yeah, different uh, people with different skills working together in a in a team. Yeah, determination. Yeah, to to determination. Yeah, to uh, to to do the job. Yeah, determination. Because sometimes we have to be patient. You have to be a balanced person. Uh, testing, testing, testing until you'll be able to discover some vulnerabilities. So it's not uh, if you are a nervous person, the cybersecurity specialization is actually not for you, honestly. Passionate about uh, continuous learning, yeah, definitely because because anytime you should be familiar with the the the, uh, the news in this field, and the news are coming overnight, yeah. Uh, ethical thinking to be an ethical person, a very ethical person and uh, collaborative and approachable so those are some soft skills requires if you want to uh, to apply for a career in uh, cyber security how does a future cyber security career look uh, looks like so there are some 
there are some some activities and domains that you should consider first identifying uh, the opportunities later to this for example specialization on uh, this field of internet of things is very important a lot of challenges related to this this sector we're lacking so many people yeah being able to being able to to handle security and internet of things world ai artificial intelligence is another very challenging and there is a huge demand of a specialist in this domain uh, ethical hacking yeah pen testing ethical hacking yeah and so i do have in this uh, this slide some basic responsibilities related to each of those three domains which are i would say challenging domain and we we need a lot of uh, specialized people in order to 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 fill the request and for for the jobs in the, in those domains um i would like to to present you for example something related to a track vulnerability assessment and penetration testing uh, track which is provided by uh, ec council yeah for example you are starting with um, ethical hacking because we are supposed to be familiar with the certified need to defender knowledge in most of the situations if you are not a beginner uh, many people are starting from here ethical hacking and uh, there are some exams yeah to prove your knowledge i'll tell you immediately something about this and after that you go to ecsa to learn more about how to prepare a pen testing project how to how to prepare the deliverable of the project how to agree everything with the customer because you are serving the customer your activity should provide uh, should provide the high value to the to the customer they're expecting this to provide you uh, remediation guidance for uh, their vulnerability and uh, the LPT is the final assessment, the final exam, license penetration test the master. And after that, uh, for seeing as a license penetration test the master, you can you are you are a certified penetration tester, so you can you can apply for a, uh, for an important job in this in this into this career of um, of uh, uh, as a penetration tester and uh, doing uh, doing uh, security testing. Uh, but uh, everything has a start, yeah. And I'll show you something more about. I'll tell you more about the uh, ethical hacking because uh, the guys at EC Council, our colleagues from EC Council, they do have even a special offer for you. Um, I told you about certifications. When you are picking certification, certification, and I have in the list the, the uh, actually the, the certifications for this area of specialization, ethical hacking. So um, ethical hacking, ethical hacking uh, uh, training and certification, it's actually recognized by um, by authorized bodies, yeah, certification bodies, which is very very important. Your certification you are preparing for uh, to pursue should be should be actually uh, recognized, getting uh, international recognition, and that could be a good reference for you if you are passing uh, such. Uh, such exams um, about the outline of the ethical hacking uh, training for example you will see there are uh, many topics here, here about 20 different modules to discuss in five days and after that there is a lot of preparation for the exam you can do by yourself yeah and uh, we are uh, following um, yeah, some guidance here that is a structure in those modules for example we are emulating the activity of pen testing uh, according to the pen testing frameworks starting with footprinting and reconnaissance scanning the network doing enumeration of the services retrieving more information about the the, the targeted systems about the vulnerabilities of the targeted systems uh, using some vulnerabilities in some common protocols and after that identifying the list of vulnerabilities and to trying to do system hacking um yeah actually compromising authentication authorization doing elevation of privilege uh, on the targeted system taking control of the systems enabling uh, a persistent control of the systems exfiltrating the information and hiding hiding the activity yeah, covering the activity on uh, those uh, those uh, systems so uh, we are learning about a lot of hacking techniques we are learning about uh, malware threats about sniffing social engineering integrated with uh, technical means yeah about denial of service session hijacking about uh, web application vulnerabilities and attacks and uh, about uh, the the latest style attacks targeting uh, iot hacking cloud computing mobile platforms 
So it's a lot of content and we're practicing um, in a such uh, training. And again, I'm presenting you just a training, just a, just the starting training for for penetration testing in that 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 uh, path of uh, vulnerability assessment and penetration testing. This is covering just the basics. So you are practicing a lot of labs, providing uh, providing this training is providing opportunity to to connect to the labs which are available online. Practicing a lot of tests, discovering and testing the vulnerabilities related to different operating systems and learning about the tools. Which tools the pen testing pen testers are using yeah this is this is a lot of conversation about this if i'm talking for example about the the exams yeah there is some information related to the exam we have two exams for ch the standard exam just questions um, yeah it's just multiple options but uh, difficult questions honestly you have four hours to uh, to to answer 125 uh, questions the exam is conducted online it's a closed book and you have as well the CH practical exam and you have to solve some challenges. Yeah, you are assigned some challenges and the practical environment, you have to solve some, uh, some uh, challenges in an online available environment and you have to prove your, your knowledge in using the, the tools. Yeah. Um, okay, so after passing those exams, you will become, uh, you will become um, a certified, uh, certified ethical master. Yeah. And uh, this is actually the starting point uh, uh, for a pen testing uh, pen testing career. Um, yeah, we are uh, we are simulating in a pen testing assignments associated to ethical hacking uh, training. We are simulating the attack chain. Yeah, you have to identify the threat agents. Um, could be yeah about cyber criminals targeting you, hacktivists, terrorists, or even uh, nation state sponsor attacks. We are talking uh, about uh, this kind of attacks. Identifying the cyber criminals, the threat agents, uh, they are selecting some attack vectors, yeah, some platforms, the tools, and they are identifying some security weaknesses associated to lack of implementation of the security controls in your organization. Yeah, identifying some missing security controls and exploiting this opportunity to generate technical impact against the assets of the organization. And this could generate a business impact, which is the final goal of the attackers that want to generate a, uh, to generate a business impact on uh, your services. And uh, as well, we have to talk about um, uh, cybersecurity, cybersecurity teams and scenarios. You have the red team, the, the blue team, the, the attackers, the defenders, and we have the purple team. Purple team, it's a, it's a virtual team, actually, uh, including people from the red team and the blue team, and they are simulating uh, some scenarios, uh, uh, tabletop exercises, they're talking. It's a purple team, it's, it's a virtual team, it's not a physical team. Physical teams are red team and blue team. As an ethical hacker, you are you are a part of the red team officially, but you could be involved in a purple team. You should be familiar with the defender's perspective as well, and the defender tools and settings, and as well uh, being familiar with the pen testing uh, pen testing approach. This is actually the the red team attack simulation model. Yeah, you are involved in doing this in the pen testing. So you are first identifying, doing reconnaissance, identifying information about the assets, uh, generating the initial compromise, establishing persistence, escalating the privilege, and uh, doing lateral movement, connecting to a command control center, doing lateral movement, uh, exfiltrating and, and uh, completing the mission. So this is actually the scenario of, uh, of uh, red team attack simulation model. Uh, as a pen tester, you are involved uh, definitely on uh, on uh, this. And now I would like to to show you a short demo, and um, asking for your advice, yeah, because uh, I'll show you a potential attack that could target uh, the assets of your organization or individual computers, and uh, the idea is how to block. My question for you. And I'm waiting for you to provide uh, to provide some ideas and to to provide uh, some solutions for this in the Q and A stage at the end of the presentation. So I'm I'm doing a demo for this uh, uh, for this type of attack. 
And after that, my question is, how can I block this attack? So let me do a short demo uh, related, to, uh, related to this. So I'm inserting on my computer, yeah, I'm inserting on my, my computer, I'm inserting a short, um, yeah, uh, um, just one second. Uh, on my computer, I'm inserting a USB device. You cannot see my device, but you have to, to believe me because uh, I did receive as a gift a uh, USB device uh, looking very nice, high capacity, and I'm tempted to, to use it on my computer. Uh, another scenario may be that one to, to find this somewhere near the entrance and there is a less small label on it uh, displaying uh, uh, secret or confidential or salary or something like this. I would like to, to see what is there. Even I did attend uh, previously the training security awareness training, and uh, I do understand the risk associated to this activity. But um, I'm a human, right? And I'm, I'm vulnerable. I want to see what's happening with this, yeah? And I'm, uh, I'm now inserting, I'm now inserting this. I'm inserting this, this U my USB drive, okay, on my USB slot on my, my computer, and let's see what's happening. Wow, it, it, it's apparently uh, it, it's happening something unattended on my computer because now you know I'm expected to be prompted. Wow, wow, what's happening on my computer? My computer got hacked. Hmm. So it was not possible for me to avoid a such a such attack. So in the same time. Uh, Okay, I'm stopping this uh, this uh, this demo. Yeah, singing and dancing and okay. Uh, well, I'm I'm stopping now the the demo. What was happening to my to my computer? I'm surprised because normally, uh, when launching something on my computer, my computer is protected. Yeah, it's my own computer. I have an antivirus on the computer. Um, I have different layers of protection. I have a firewall. And I'm expecting the operating system to, to prompt me if something is running unexpected on my, my computer, yeah? It, it should be, I, I should be prompted, yeah? Do you want me to run uh, this application or something like this? There is an, we're talking about UAC, yeah? User account control, which is, which is implemented in any, any operating system now. However, the attack, it was happening for me. I, I had no, no opportunity to, to react. And okay, it was uh, launching, uh, uh, something, an activity, singing, a uh, dancing, actually a PowerShell, a PowerShell script, a dedicated PowerShell script. It was downloaded from somewhere on the, uh, the internet, directly in the memory, injected in the memory of the computer and avoiding inspection of the, the antivirus, um, by the antivirus platform running on my computer. So apparently it was, it, it's difficult to block a such attack. My, my idea is, my, my question for you is um, after, providing you some more information related to, to this attack. How could I, I how should I block such uh, attack? How, how to do, yeah? Because apparently it was running unattended. Um, if I'm going to, you, you know, many organizations are blocking the usage of USB storage just to avoid such type of attack. But uh, if we're visiting my computer, the configuration of my computer, I'm asking for, I'm starting device manager on my computer. Okay, let's check it. I'm checking for device manager on my computer. Um, okay, just going for keyboards. I can see a list of the keyboards because it's a, it's a laptop. Okay, uh, if I'm removing uh, my drive, USB drive, I use for the testing purpose. Okay, you can see one of the keyboards disappearing. So what was happening? Uh, actually, actually, one of the keyboard disappearing. So during this attack, when I did insert the USB drive in my computer, it was identifying not, not as a USB storage. I, I can check it was no additional storage here, but uh, the device, 
it was the malicious device, I would say, the dangerous device. It was identified as an additional keyboard and typing what I'm uh, emulating what I'm typing myself from the keyboard. And for this reason, the antivirus, it was not so efficient. And it was launching my, my scripts running on this uh, on this device because it's about um, it's about the device. Maybe some of you are familiar with this this one. It's about rubber ducky. Yeah. Rubber Ducky, it's a dedicated, uh, it's a dedicated uh, uh, pen testing device we're using uh, to test the vulnerabilities in the, in the network. And uh, there is, a, there is a micro SD storage on this, and uh, I'm storing there some, some scripts, compiled scripts, and the scripts are running automatically, emulating what I'm typing from the, from the keyboard myself. Yeah? Um, and you could do some evil things. For example, I have a... I have in this uh, screenshot the presentation of the usage of Mimikatz. Mimikatz is extracting actually the hashes of the password and could conduct some different uh, different attacks, injection attacks based on uh, on this. My script, my script, it was uh, I would say uh, uh, yeah a bit more decent because uh, actually it was uh, actually just running a script, uh, singing, dancing, doing some. Uh, Doing some uh, network reconnaissance on my uh, my computer, and um, yeah, the damage it was created is not it was not so high. Uh, that could be higher, honestly. Honestly, could be higher as such uh, uh, such impact. And uh, yeah, I have some other example how to you examples how to use a such uh, a such device for uh, for uh, pen testing. Yeah, just an example. This one, and another example. For example, like how to how to inject a, a PowerShell script directly in the memory of the, the computer. It, it was actually the situation I did present uh, to you. It was my, my attack. And this kind of attack is bypassing antivirus, uh, intrusion, yeah, IPS systems, IDS, firewalls, leave no evidence on the system if you are actually injecting directly the code in the memory of the computer. It was the behavior I did present, uh, I present you. So my question, for uh, this uh, short uh, demo is that one, my question for you is that one, how should I block this? Maybe you'll have the conversation, please prefer to have a such conversation in the last stage of our conversation at the end of the, the presentation when uh, we are handling some uh, questions, yeah? I, I would like to, to ask your opinion, yeah? How should I block a such attack? Yeah, it's, it's possible to block a such, a such attack. Seems to be very dangerous and some traditional techniques are not working anymore yeah okay so we'll have a conversation at the end uh, at the end of the presentation related to this um i simulated a pen testing activity and now let's see the flow yeah when conducting pen a pen testing uh, pen testing simulation uh, what are the 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 steps yeah, to, to simulate the steps involved in, um, in the activity of red team when conducting uh, penetration testing, analyzing uh, attack scenarios. Um, the phases are reconnaissance, and we're using some tools like Metasploit, like uh, Shodan, Foca, Multego, and so we have a list of the, uh, and uh, on the screen, you have a list of the popular tools that you are expected to be familiar with those tools when conducting uh, pen testing, yeah? Vulnerability scanning, yeah, for example, Equinetics or Nessus and so um, exploitation, Metasploit. It's basically a very popular platform to to do this. Uh, um, SQL Map, so Burp Suite uh, proxy platform uh, to generate exploits against the target systems. And uh, after that, privilege exploitation, taking control of the systems using uh, using different uh, different uh, techniques. Metaprator, yeah, it's a very popular uh, or uh, beef exploitation, browser exploitation framework. And uh, after playing a such exercise, taking control of the systems and analyzing the vulnerabilities and the opportunities to exploit the vulnerabilities, uh, yeah, there is a conversation with the, the, the blue team guys in the organization in that, in that um, uh, scenario of the purple team, yeah. And uh, there it, it will be a conversation. Which are actually the the, the most uh, the most efficient techniques in order to block such particular attack? And I would like to simulate a such conversation at the end of the session uh, session today, right? 
The pen testing approach, you should be familiar with, uh, with this as well, different uh, stages of the pen testing approach. Yeah. Uh, first of all, be familiar. Readiness is very important. Analyzing uh, the configuration, analyzing the baseline uh, of configuration of your targeted system, uh, the customer uh, customer network. Because remember, you in a pen testing scenario, you are uh, simulating actually the activity of uh, real hackers, but uh, you have to conduct this in a legitimate mode. You need a, an agreement, and you know the the most important the the, the the, the, the difference between the activity of a pen tester and a real attacker is the existence of the existence of an agreement. Yeah. Otherwise, you are using the same tool. You are you are simulating the same uh, same attack techniques. So this is actually uh, what you, what you are doing. Um, and you are analyzing the the steps. Yeah. For example, what is doing application application uh, penetration test? What kind of uh, steps are included in this ethical hacking and advanced persistent threat uh, test? Uh, what we are doing or some customized test? Because you are agreeing different different plans based on the uh, the, the business requirements and the business assets and the business needs of the customers. You are identifying the tests that may be included in a in a pen testing uh, pen testing project you are simulating different uh, different stages using uh, different uh, different tools um okay so uh, the methodology of ethical hacking recommended by ethical hacking we we do learn about this in um, in the pen testing in the ethical hacking training so this is the approach considering uh, footprinting scanning enumeration vulnerability analysis identify the vulnerabilities and after that uh, doing system hacking using uh, using different uh, tools, techniques, and uh, and uh, platforms for uh, for this. So you need a lot of specialized um, uh, specialized uh, knowledge related to those tools. This is not coming overnight. You know, so we have to to be familiar, to learn the tools, to practice a lot, to experience a lot in your in your home lab. Yeah, to practice, you have to practice a lot if you want to become a a, a, a successful pen tester and uh, emulating those uh, those activities and learn learn a lot you have to learn a lot about the latest uh, tools techniques and procedures used by the attackers uh, we have um, a different domain we have to consider which is threat intelligence yeah and uh, threat hunting to see it uh, to 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 see if the if the threats you are identifying, uh, visiting uh, open source site, visiting in GitHub and learning about so many attack tools could be applied in, uh, could be transformed in attacks uh, against your assets, organizational assets. So you have to do a lot of testing for, uh, for, for this, trying to, to get access to the systems, to, to enable persistent attack. You have to be familiar with a lot of tools. Talking about the tools, so just, this is just a, a small collection of tools expected you to be familiar with when, uh, when doing uh, penetration testing. Maybe some names here are familiar to, to do, some, some tools are more basic, serving a particular purpose some other tools like metasploit for example are definitely definitely uh, big platforms including a lot of capabilities and attack tools and uh, you can simulate different attack scenarios platform like multego for example are very complex uh, one and you should be familiar to with all those tools because um, every every single pen tester is actually building um, his own toolbox based on the recommendations and experience. Personal experience is very important. And uh, the, 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 the toolbox of pen testers are not identical. Based on the profile of the activity you are doing, based on the profile, business profile of your customers, based on your, the personal experience again, and the amount of money you want to spend for uh, to invest in, in buying professional tools because you are not expecting to do any kind of job just using open source tools. Um, yes, I do have here uh, just to just to summarize the conversation about uh, different uh, different uh, pen testing scenarios. I want to show you um, a scenario of a pen testing. Yeah. To present you a scenario of pen testing and so what kind of activities are included here you are simulating activity you have a, you have a, an environment 
which is exposing some web servers, clients, including uh, different uh, network resources. You have some protection, uh, protection uh, network, uh, network protection systems, and uh, you are trying to identify and to exploit the vulnerabilities. And you are generating a flow in this case. Yeah, you can, uh, for example, you are starting to exploit a, um, a stored cross-site scripting flow in a weathering hole the target to inject, a, to inject a, a hook, yeah, designed to exploit only specific uh, client systems. And this could, be, this could be available on a web server hosted in DMZ that you can have access to, to it from outside the organization. And uh, after that, you are inviting, you have to lure the, the clients in organization to visit that compromised web server, hosting them and DMZ, sending them phishing emails and, and uh, so on, step number two. And uh, after that, after that, uh, you are, um, you are uh, using uh, a client side, we're exploiting client side vulnerability with Metasploit to take control of the, to compromise the client, uh, client machine, visiting uh, your web server. And um, yeah, there are there are some steps after that. Uh, after that, actually, you are collecting the information extracted from the client machines to um, to an uh, to an intranet web server, SharePoint server, and uh, this could be could be vulnerable. And you are creating opportunities to to run some other cross-site scripting uh, attacks on uh, on this uh, web server and discovering targeting some other web servers and. Uh, exploiting some other flows, SQL injection potentially, and uh, at the end, exfiltrating all information you collected and compromise the, compromise the business assets of the organization. This is, this is a normal pen testing scenario. That could be a black box pen testing because initially you are not provided too much information about the assets of the, uh, the, the target organization. You are typically just provided a name and you have to do everything, uh, everything, um, yeah, to build your scenarios, to discover the vulnerabilities and to exploit the vulnerabilities. Uh, you have to make a plan related to this, but you have to be familiar with different tools, attack tools and platforms. Yeah, we have just a list here, Bird Suite, Browser Exploitation Framework, cross-site scripting uh, attacks, yeah, cross-site request forgery, SQL map tool, and so you should be you should build some some code. This is very important to build uh, some HTML uh, HTML code involved in the step one and step uh, step five, and to be familiar with the cross-site scripting attacks as, uh, as well. So this is a, a scenario that uh, actually could be uh, could be uh, could be a real scenario of uh, penetration testing uh, activity. Um, okay, um, I would like to to have more time to simulate uh, such uh, some attacks. You have to you have to test a lot and to um, this is this is something that could be. Uh, something normal for the activity of um, of a pen tester. You should not rely just on a single uh, protection uh, protection uh, uh, level that you could recommend to the customer. Because again, the customers are expecting from you to provide to, to provide them guidance how to fix the vulnerability. They know they are vulnerable. They are not paying you in a pen testing project just to display them, you, uh, just to show them they are vulnerable. They are paying you in order to provide some remediation. You don't have to 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 recommend them remediation. You don't have to provide them uh, by yourself in a pen testing project remediation. They should they should fix the issues, the vulnerabilities by themselves. But you have to provide. They're relying on the recommendation you are uh, you are providing. And uh, just to make maybe some uh, an additional test, a short, a short test related to this. Just to show you, for example, how it looks like a, a malware assessment. Yeah, just to be, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to provide you a new, um, yeah. Let's let's have a short demo because we are relying a lot on the customer. They're saying, okay, I do have an antivirus, I'm protected. Yeah, but uh, how efficient is the antivirus? Antivirus. Let's have a short demo related to the antivirus protection in your in your organization. I do have a very small uh, tool, yeah, which is um, a GPS virus maker. Uh, this tool actually 
it's um, it's an application generating some um, uh, malware tools. Yeah. And uh, I want to generate a Trojan, for example, and sending uh, to a victim machine to compromise, uh, go compromise a, a, a victim, uh, a, the victim machine. So this tool, okay, you you don't have to be um, an expert, a programming expert, in order to build a to build a small piece of malware based on this uh, this tool. Yeah, it's I'm just picking some options and this in my my tool. For example, disable uh, disable registry um disable test manager uh disable the antivirus um yeah disable security center disable system restore i'm picking some potentially dangerous activities yeah affecting the security of the the, the system yeah destroy I, I, i'll pick this one terminate windows i think it's enough for our demo purpose i have to pick the name after installation yeah, I can keep run DLL or another uh, DLL name or another executable file name. And I'm picking the name of the carrier, the executable file that could uh, carry actually this, this attack. Yeah, uh, run, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm keeping the, the default one, sender.exe, and I'm creating the virus. Okay, my computer is saying, okay, the, the virus it was creating. Uh, you know what's happening if I'm double clicking this? right i'm trying to avoid uh, to avoid this because i want to finish my presentation yeah in front uh, in front of you uh not to compromise my my computer i'm trying to avoid this but um i want to check how dangerous could be uh this this uh, malware tool i created i want to send it because in order to be successful i have to send it to the to the victim machine and uh, well, let me check how dangerous that 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 could be. This one, I'm uploading this. Uh, I'm uploading this in part. It's it could be part of my my demo. So I would like to to upload uh, this uh, malware I created to Virus Total. Virus Total, yeah, Virus Total. Okay, I'm uploading this. yeah good i'm choosing the file uh it's somewhere here in the virus folder on my machine virus gps virus maker sender.exe i'm uploading this i'm uploading this to virus total you're familiar maybe with virus total it's a platform uh inspecting some uh, suspicious files and it's a free platform i'm just uploading the suspicious file and they're conducting analyzers uh, the analysis is based on the um, yeah, identification of potential uh, vulnerabilities, uh, potential uh, potential uh, uh, threats in no less than checking with no less than 70, I can see, 70, 72 different antivirus databases. Okay, a lot of, lot of them. Different antivirus makers, they are provided, they're connected here. And uh, they are, the, the, this tool, it's actually inspection doing inspection of the code based on the the information um, available in the databases of uh, 70 more than 70 different antivirus makers so it's a good opportunity to to test because you are using typically one of those uh, antivirus platforms and you want to see how efficient is this one um, okay well i'm i'm not very happy yeah, as an attacker because i can see uh most of the antiviruses are saying okay definitely there is something suspicious in this file it's not you are not good to go don't 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 use it don't don't it's blocking the antiviruses are blocking this quarantining or removing actually my my virus uh well it is uh, there is a green list some uh antiviruses are saying okay it's still uh nothing suspicious in this file but uh, the the green list it's it's small one 63 out of 72 antivirus engines are saying okay definitely this file is it's this file is dangerous so we're blocking this so i have to consider the opportunity how should i send how should i send to the victim machine uh, such uh, such file because if i'm trying to send as an email attachment or something like this, it doesn't work it will be blocked any 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 relevant uh, antivirus will block this okay let's do some analysis some some something else yeah 
let's uh, make uh, let's consider a, a different approach i want to i'm using another tool which is um, a crypto well, crypto it's adding an additional level of uh, obfuscation of the code of the executable code so in encoding my executable file once more and building another executable file if i'm um, if I'm, what's happening if I'm double clicking the new executable file created? Well, the, um, the original file will be extracted and probably the effect will be the same from my point of view. So the effect should be the same. So I'm, I'm actually encoding, I'm encoding that, uh, that file. I'm going to, to identify my sender.exe file. I'm opening, I'm uploading, yeah, I'm encrypting this one. Just using a basic, basic encryption. Yeah, to replace it, yeah, it was a previous one, no problem. I'm generating a new one. Okay, the file it was generated, and now I have to upload again this file to Varustotl. Let's check what's happening. Uh, from my perspective, it should be the same result, right? Because actually, if I'm double-clicking the new file, um it's actually extracting the previous file and the, the effect uh, when running on my computer it will be basically the same but let's see let's see the opinion of virus total yeah i'm going to choose my file i'm i'm choosing the new file which is somewhere on my my desktop here it's cryptedfile.exe cryptedfile.exe i'm uploading this file i'm confirming upload and I'm expecting to see the same results. Remember the previous analysis, it was displaying 63 out of 72. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's, let's see the analysis. Takes a while, yeah, a couple of seconds. Okay, and you'll see immediately the result of analysis, yeah. Take a bit more. I'm expecting again to see the same result because I know that is the same file. I'm just, just added, just encoded once, one time more, yeah. But the effect when running that file on my on the, the the victim computer, it will be definitely the same. I'm expecting to be the same, right? Let's see. It takes a while, but seems the result seems to be different, right? Look, about just half of the antivirus engine are detecting something suspicious with my file. Wow, that's that's completely different. I'm surprised. Yeah, just 22 out of uh, 49. We can we can leave the the analysis to continue. Definitely, the result will be somewhere here. Just half of the half of the the, the um, uh, scanning engines are detecting something suspicious uh, in this file. So it was so easy to it was so easy to to bypass the protection uh, using so many so many if i'm using so many so many uh, antivirus platforms yeah some of the antivirus platforms are, are vulnerable you know i'm getting any time wow 27 out of 70 uh, 50 57 uh, just basically less than half we're detecting there is something suspicious of the with this file so the green list it's a big one this time Okay, so Panda, you, you'd recognize some relevant antivirus here. Yeah, antivirus is Symantec, it's saying it's okay. Trend Micro, wow, I'm, I, I'm surprised, yeah? I'm surprised because so many, so many um, uh, trusted antiviruses are saying, okay, this uh, for us is green, this file. Even I know that there is something uh, very suspicious in this, in this file, yeah? Wow, it's you know, some of them they didn't finish in uh, in, in the right time the, uh, in the right time the analyzers. This is another issue, yeah, because I'm expecting uh, the analyzers to be to be a very fast one. It was uh, just the first stage of static analyzers, and it's proving actually uh, sometimes um, yeah the, the the antivirus engines are not so efficient. Um, and I did use just a very basic technique building an executable file and to send it to the victim machine in order to compromise the victim machine but it's not actually the common scenario you are expecting in the real life for malware because a lot of attacks are generated by by malware so the entry point for malware in the most of the situations is the phishing email and not considering to send an executable file in in attachment 
So maybe in a couple of of minutes, I will share, I will share another, uh, yeah, um, a scenario of a real malware attack. And so just to prove you must be familiar with the attack styles and to just uh, to 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 be prepared to to handle actually those uh, those attacks. So I have um, I have a situation I have a, a case presented by uh, McAfee. McAfee, I think I, I want to, to share an example. I do have some examples even related to uh, related coronavirus outbreak because I told you anytime the the attackers are taking advantage of uh, some particular event, some particular behavior, yeah, in order to, to confuse the victims and to use social engineering techniques to, to, to create more confusions for the victims. I do have, for example, um, a such scenario presented by McAfee about uh, a virus, a macro virus. It's not, we're not talking about executable files to send as in uh, my previous example. But uh, how looks like a modern attack? Yeah, you should be familiar as a pen tester with this to emulate and to provide uh, guidance uh, to your customers to defend against uh, such such attacks. So it was about um, uh, a document, an email, a particular email, pretending to at the time when uh, we had two years ago we had uh, Olympic Games in in uh, South Korea. And um, it was revealed at the time of a particular attack. Yeah, it was spreading um, an email uh, claiming to, to be sent by the National Counterterrorism Authority in South Korea. Um, an email using um, Korean language and uh, having as an attachment a Word document including, uh, including uh, Kore in, in Korean language. Nothing suspicious so far, right? Because expected to, to see such messages yeah, sent by the government organizations to, to like a warning from uh, helping people to provide better protection and so on. Let's analyze this, this uh, message, yeah? It was seen first time in December 29, yeah? Uh, two, years, uh, two years ago. And um, the, the, um, uh, the email, phishing email, it was, uh, apparently sent by from this email address, which is the address of National Counterterrorist Center in South Korea. So, looking as a legitimate organization, legitimate email, a legitimate email, and um, it was an it was a word document attached this uh, to this document in Korean language. So, nothing suspicious so far. Some people they tried to they tried to open this document. So expecting a document in Korean language at the time, yeah, expecting this, this uh, agency to send, uh, to send uh, such email in, in Korean language. And um, people trying to open this document, they were seeing just obfuscated content. Just obfuscated content. That means, uh, okay, what to do in order to open the document? You know, it was a, it was a comment there. Enable content to adjust this document to your version of Microsoft Word. And you are familiar because by default, the documents you are receiving by email are you can open in protected mode. So in order to open, to, to change the content uh, or to save the email, or so you have to, to press the button, enable content. This is a protection technique. But what is happening if you are, if you are pressing the, this button, enable content? You are enabling macros besides some other some other removing some other protection barriers you are enabling macros and the document it was including a visual basic macro inside so again it was no executable attachment suspicious attachment it was just a just a word document and um, yeah the document it was including an obfuscated visual basic macro and uh, this obfuscated basic mac difficult to understand yeah honestly what is even if you are proficient in visual basic that is a bit difficult to understand what is behind and um, yeah what it was doing this one it was launching the that visual basic macro it was changing the execution policy for powershell to unrestricted if you are a bit familiar with powershell yeah removing actually the the requirement for that script to be signed and um, yeah it was actually extracting the visual basic macro it was it was um, launching a powershell script to run in a session in a dedicated session and uh, obfuscated as well what it was doing that powershell script it was actually downloading a picture connecting somewhere online and downloading a picture 
And the picture has embedded using steganography, uh, steganography tool has uh, embedded another PowerShell script. So uh, um, a hierarchy of levels of obfuscation creating, um, well, actually making the, the job of the, the guys doing analysis of this attack a bit more difficult. Yeah. And uh, they were using a tool to embed to embed a PowerShell script in an image. Actually, this it was the, the image downloaded by the first PowerShell script, which is, was included in the code by the, by the, the Visual Basic Macro. Uh, so it was displaying the logo to the document, a header to the document, so nothing suspicious again so far, but it was uh, included a second in this picture, it was included a second, uh, a second PowerShell script, uh, and uh, actually the, the tool used to embed, to embed the PowerShell script in, uh, in a picture downloaded from a particular site, it was actually um, revealed on GitHub just December 20. So the attack it was active. It was seen on December 29, and the tool it was invoked PS image. It was actually um, uh, published on GitHub just uh, one week before. So the attackers were working very, uh, very quickly. Yeah, to to use. They did learn to use this this uh, steganography tool to embed uh, to embed something in an image. Uh, and uh, the second PowerShell script, as well obfuscated, what it was doing, it was collecting some information from, uh, from sensitive information. They're looking for contacts, uh, for uh, uh, information included in uh, Excel spreadsheets and uh, so on, collecting email addresses and, and so on. And um, sending this information, exfiltrating this information to a command control center. And it was a full list of command control centers connecting to it. So if a if a command control center is blocked, for example, by the authorities, so the connection is guaranteed to uh, uh, to, to another command control center for exfiltration the, the, the information. So a very dangerous attack. Uh, just to I I was intending to show you how it looks like uh, a modern attack, because you are not expecting uh, the the attackers not to be very smart. They are very smart. They are using any time the latest uh, latest tools. So as a as a defender, a uh, member of the blue team or red team, yeah, you have to be able to to understand the attack, to be uh, to learn about the latest tools, techniques, and procedures, the TTPs, and uh, yeah, to 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 be familiar with the, the latest uh, latest um, attack techniques uh, used by the attackers. Uh, it was uh, actually a collection of of uh, of, uh, of uh, tools and techniques used by the attackers in order to make uh, such attack even more uh, more uh, dangerous and to affect uh, more users. Yeah, using uh, this technique of social engineering, pretending that email to come from uh, from uh, from an official organization, usage uh, the use uh, the use of Korean language. Yeah, this trick with the document in, um, that you could open first, you are opening first in the protected mode, and after that you have to enable content, uh, yeah, and to, to, to make the, the scripts embedded in this document to run. So it was just, a, just an example how the attackers are now, how the, how the real attacks are, are uh, looking now and what kind of skills you need in order to be uh, proficient in doing virus analysis to identify the attacks and to provide guidance, to recommend guidance to, uh, to your customers to protect against uh, such attacks. So I think uh, now it's, um, uh, we are at the end of the, uh, the, our conversation. So, uh, but before, uh, before switching to the uh, Q&A part of our session, I would like uh, to yeah, present uh, an offer from EC Council Academia, uh, inviting you to, to contact um, the manager of the Academia, uh, Academia institution. You have the email address here and uh, Talia and uh, inviting you to, to contact um, the manager because they do have a special offer for, uh, for students, special student discounts for uh, most of the courses in the portfolio of, uh, of EC Council. So that could be 
um, very very good opportunity for you to apply for a discount. Uh, you you have to specify you you did attend this webinar and uh, actually to to take advantage of the the offer um, presented by uh, by EC Council for all the trainings they have a special offer for students. Okay. I would like to thank you very much for um, for uh, listening to my presentation, watching my presentation, and now it's time for um, questions, right? Uh, remember, I would like to to hear from you about the techniques how to block rubber ducky attack. It was my question for you, yeah, that we have to deal with this. You have to recommend me some, yeah, how to how to deal with this kind of attack. Uh, hi, George. Uh, thanks a lot. I'm sure everyone really enjoyed this presentation and they have got a lot of key takeaways. So everyone, just before we head into the question and answer, George has already posted a question to you. So before we get to answering that, do send in your answers and we'll be running a short poll. So do, uh, you know, fill up the poll. Sounds fantastic. Yeah, sure. All right, George, we've gotten an answer. The first answer is through USB. There is a malicious code which yes. has a backdoor. Give access to the hacker computer. We can control it by not using unauthorized USB or scanning for a USB. Okay, so yes, definitely that could be a solution. However, we have to keep in mind uh, something, yeah, because the solution to, to block the USB devices or to block the removal devices cannot be very appropriate because, again, uh, my device is presenting a class ID of a keyboard. And uh, if you are actually blocking the class ID for keyboards, you are limiting the functionality of the computer, yeah. And you should be very careful when building a, building a whitelist or blacklist for the devices supported by, by, by a computer yeah, in a such scenario. So the solution is correct. Yeah, the solution is very correct. But uh, you should be very careful with the implementation when, when doing blacklisting or blacklisting or whitelisting. Uh, any, any other answers related to this topic, to my question? Yeah, Just there to... are a couple of answers that have come in, George. So one is yeah. you can use Pentarac disguised keyboard detector. That's one. Then another is if you really need to investigate it, you can use a spare Raspberry Pi not connected to the device. Then someone has suggested you can disable auto run or, or you know, even test the USB on a donor machine. Mm, yes, okay, uh, about Autorun. Autorun is, is disabled by default. Honestly, this is the default behavior for uh, all modern operating systems, including Windows 10, and so Autorun is, is, is disabled. So, but um, it, it's not protecting, yeah, this for the attack. We have to understand this. So I, I, I uh, really appreciate the, the conversation we do have because Autorun, it's, it's um, uh, it's not helping in this situation because actually you are simulating uh, what you are typing from the keyboard and Autorun cannot protect against this because you are typing something by your bow. It's simulating what the user is typing on the keyboard. It's simulating a keyboard. It's not like a, a, a program stored in the USB removal drive, removal storage, which is running unattended. So auto run protection is not uh, enabled, is not helping uh, too much uh, for this. Uh, there is another, an, some other, another answer, other answers later to solutions, providing solutions for this, uh, my particular question. Yeah. I've gotten another two answers. And the answer is create a GPO that requires password input for all UAC prompts, as that will effectively limit any keyboard emulator to non-privileged access and will prevent assistive devices. And this, now, the second solution is lock out the computer at USB introduction that not matches the whitelist needs as agent checks the OS. Hmm, excellent. Both both sensors are, are very good. 
very good answers and providing some yeah, very good solutions yeah because um yeah definitely um you are identifying when you're inserting a new usb device that could be this this behavior could be monitored and uh, blocking yeah there are some solutions including uh, if you're using a windows machine advanced threat protection could be enabled a group policy as well may be used or uh, some other some other uh, policy implementation solutions in order to block some particular the installation of some particular devices limiting limiting uh, the uh, device id for example to some particular devices you you do now in the organization so i'm inviting I'll, I'll show you uh thank you very much guys for for uh, providing uh, really useful solutions because there is no single solution we have to consider maybe more solutions to this and uh, i'm inviting you even to yeah, I did find uh, something. Maybe you you can uh, analyze a bit uh, this. That could be good. I have a solution for you. Just a, a second. I'm opening the the link uh, somewhere. Uh, okay. So so it's a solution. I'm calling Duck Hunter. It's a solution on uh, I'm opening on, on GitHub. I'm inviting you to read the documentation related to to Duck Hunter. Yeah duck hunt duck hunt and so there is a philosophy of usage uh, of this tool duck hunter which is available on the code everything the tool it's uh, downloadable on um, on uh, on uh, github and it's providing an excellent solution it's a software tool uh, and is detecting any suspicious uh, usb connection attempt even what you are typing for example from the keyboard and um, for example, it's interrupting. It's interrupting. Uh, is stopping actually. What it's automatically typing, yeah. And the attack. It's when you're typing. For example, this this script is is trying to to type PowerShell. The attack is detecting the stop immediately. And um, in order to type something on the keyboard, you need to enter a password. For example, yeah. You can enable different protection policy. Uh, different levels, paranoid, uh, yeah, the keyboard may be uh, input, may be disallowed until the password is input, and the tag could be logged or normally keyboard will input will temporary, keyboard input will be temporarily disallowed, and uh, so on, different, uh, different policies. And uh, yeah, that could be, that could be excellent to, yeah, to, to read the documentation of this, uh, to the documentation of uh, of this i'm sharing actually the the link to this and i'm sharing the link of another article that would clarify the aspect related how to use uh, advanced uh, persistent to uh, 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 advanced uh, protection yeah uh, to tools so the the first link i'm sharing on the chat window if you guys are checking the chat window you can um, you can see I'm sharing to all audience. And there's another link I want to, to share, presenting a similar solution and presenting uh, information about the usage of another other pen testing, similar pen testing devices. Just one second to, to, retrieve, the, to retrieve the link uh, from here. And uh, yeah, I'll show you immediately. Yeah, I'm uh, presenting you on the chat window you should have uh, able to read the, the links oh just a second yeah because i have to yeah just one second because i have to i have to, to share the link yeah copy the link and now i'm sharing on the chat window inviting you to to read this article when you will have time it's an interesting article um that it was it was created by one of my colleagues yeah i'm sending this i i hope you you did receive actually those those links yeah inviting you to to read uh, some additional information related to uh, this attack style and how to block it excellent uh, excellent uh, answers thank you very much so some other questions related to to the topics we did discuss today 
Yeah, George, a couple of people want to know that, you know, if they're starting out in cyber security, what would be some courses or what would be certifications that would help them along the way? And how do they go about doing that? And if you couldn't also add in a little bit of what salary scales they would be looking at. Oh, uh, yeah, it's about the salary. Well, it's an interesting uh, conversation. Yeah, because I think I have a, I have somewhat a report related to related to, to this yeah top uh, top skill let me let me check because i think i um if i'm um if i'm visiting the ec council site because uh, we are now attending a presentation uh, um presentation sponsored by by ec council if i'm uh, visiting the ec council um ec council uh, official page you can see you can see information about uh, the training programs yeah, just inviting you. There is a there is a large number of of uh, uh, programs, all of them related to cybersecurity. You can see, for example, I was uh, yeah visit just visit ecouncil.org, and uh, you can see certifications certifications which are provided by uh, by uh, EC Council. In my opinion, EC Council is the organization, the global organization. Uh, presenting the largest portfolio of certifications uh, for for cybersecurity and uh, certification starting with certification for uh, uh, users yeah for for computer users for example fundamental certified certify secure computer uh, computer user starting uh, starting with this yeah and uh, after that uh, more advanced certification going to yeah for example we are talking now about uh, Ethical hacking um, uh, certification, certifications related to computer forensics, uh, pen testing certification. There is a there is a flow yeah to to follow for each of those uh, certifications, and um, yeah if I uh, there are certifications for defenders for the blue team members like for example SOC analyst, threat intelligence analyst, uh, incident handler so. Um, certificate certifications for encryption uh, specialists, disaster recovery specialists. There are plenty of certifications, and there is a flow for each of them. If I'm opening, for example, yeah, let me open here. I'm uh, spending a bit more time providing an answer to to um, uh, this question because um, actually we have. AC Council Masterclass. Yeah, I want to, to show you the programs in, included here. Uh, okay, then Tester, uh, CH, 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 CH. Yeah, uh, let me check for this because you'll see you'll see the, the path of certification. Yeah, it's very important to to consider the certification the certification path. There are some. There are some there are some uh, paths as I did show you. Uh, okay, it's, it's here. It should be in the bottom of this. Uh, okay, about the the certification track. For example, including CH, including uh, ECSA, including uh, and you have the options to go for uh, CHFI. So uh, definitely, I'm inviting you. I cannot find that that uh, that uh, representation, graphical representation. Maybe to get to uh, remember, I did show you. I can go to my presentation just to just to uh, display this a bit. Yeah, it was about the the track. Yeah. You have to identify some tracks and not apply just for individual certification. So first of all, you have to you have to apply for. Uh, I, I do show you the the certification track here. For example, for vulnerability assessment and penetration testing. I'm displaying you again this uh, this one. And um, yeah, there is a flow. You are starting with uh, with ethical hacking, and after that uh, ECSA, and after that LPT. So what uh, it's very important for the certification uh, path you are choosing, we are talking about uh, job job related certifications. 
So we are not learning about a product or a platform. So now we are focusing on the job role, yeah? The job role of an ethical hacker, the job role of a pen tester, the job role of a, of a penetration tester. And so of course you can consider sometimes a combination between the certifications from uh, different, uh, different providers because uh, yeah, there are some different uh, different providers of certification uh, pads, and there is a an, uh, an, uh, combination when applying a job for a job. Yeah, for the different uh, certification that could be in your list. But uh, the most important thing is that one to apply for the certification which is trusted, which is recognized by the certification bodies. And so, yeah, you can search very easily for this kind of uh, for this kind of information. For example, the CH uh has uh, has an international recognition i told you you can see here department of defense in uh, in united states i i was spending i was uh, providing uh training services to so so many people in the u.s army yeah because uh the the this certification of ch it's a uh, it's a it's a certification in the list of official certification recognized by by the ministry, by the, the Department of Defense in the United States, as being in the in the portfolio, they, they do have a framework for for this. There is a list of certifications recognized, yeah, in this, uh, yeah, for certi for certi there is a process of uh, of uh, authorizing a certification. There is a long; it will take years, yeah, to analyze the curricula, to uh, to accept, to get an uh, to get the international recognition or the particular recognition like military recognition and so forth, some certification. And this is my advice when when selecting uh, uh, your, your your certifications you want to pursue, you want to ch achieve, to apply for uh, well-known uh, certifications which are provide a well-known and providing the recognition for uh, for you. All right, George, think, uh, thanks yeah, a lot. I think it was, um, yeah, I, I did provide you the the, uh, the right answer for, for this question. Okay. All right, George, uh, thanks a lot for the webinar today. I'm sure everyone here who has participated and attended it has, uh, you know, gauged a lot from it understood a lot and has got further clarity for those of you whose questions we couldn't get to do feel free to write to us and we'll contact george and share the answers with you thank you everyone for joining in have a nice day thank you very much for joining the webinar uh, you can contact me on linkedin